Hello again, this is a chapter 6 video and we're looking at Javadoc. So this section is all about looking at documentation for your code and specifically class documentation. Uh, so Java provides a really easy method for you to do this so you can do it in line with writing your code so you don't have to sort of do it all separately. Um, and when we're doing this we need to develop it because ultimately the interface, so what people can see about the particular class is the important bit. Again, the implementation is the bit that how it works. When other people use our classes and, and when we ourselves go back and use our classes that we created, we'll need to know what they do because believe you me, when you get back to a class after you have after you did it for a few days, um, then it it needs it you'll need to sort of re-go and redo all the logic unless you create well documented classes. So what you can do is you can develop your own uh, potential um, library class. So let's have a quick look at uh, Java Doc as what it looks like. So I've got my Zool uh, Better program open now. Um, so let's just have a quick look at that. Now, as we look into the game class here, you'll see that obviously we've got all our bits and pieces in there. Now, the bit that Java Doc has, has been doing has been sort of doing in the background. So this here, when it's written like this, this is all contributing towards Java Doc uh, and the at author bit and the at version, etc. So let's just see what happens. Now, if I just show you the folder which it was using, it, which it's using. So here's our Zool Bad project. So let's have a look at our Zool Better project. This is just in my for structure. I'm going to delete that doc folder for a second. It looks like it would do for yours. Now, when you click on here on documentation, it pauses for a minute. Now, on some compilers, you'll be able to see the documentation. On mine, you can't see it very clearly. But even if you can see it on your documentation or on, on your slide, it doesn't look as good unless you go into the actual folder. Now, as you've seen, this now creates a folder called doc. If you now go into the doc, you'll see that it's created a number of um, HTML files. You can then double click on index, a file which looks like the Java documentation you've been used to on the API. Now, this bit here is very, very clever because now we, when we want to create and work with classes, we create the classes and then by default this is already created. So that, bit, that version which was shown in the Java doc there is there, the author is shown there so if you put your author name in there then, then that will come up with your name there. It then gives the constructors and the method summaries as we know there's only one method in this particular class which is the play method and it gives you the constructor details and method details associated with it. So now we've got a method of creating our own uh, API as such. Now it's important then that you start to then document your methods correctly. So when in your job documentation, your the class needs to include all of that information there. The class name, a comment describing what it does, version number, author's number, and then each constructor and method needs to have their own documentation as well. So each constructor and method needs to have this in the actual documentation itself when you write it out. So you need to put, as we see here, for each method, it's got the, uh, the little bit of documentation before each method and that will automatically get created in the Java doc to be populated in the right place. So all you need to do in that is put the name of the method, the return type, the parameter names and types, what it does, a um, little description for each parameter and value returned. So what your Java documentation is going to look like is something like that. So that's an example of one with the app author and app version. Now the Java doc will pick up those at symbols, so be careful only to use the at symbols when you're uh, using the actual uh, words associated with Java doc. In your methods, you now need to start writing things that look like this. So you've got at param for the parameters and then at return. In terms of information hiding, as we've been discussing, it's important to uh, go along with, uh, or to, to use this encapsulation idea where each class encapsulates its own data uh, and only gives people access to the things which they really need. In other words, make everything private as much as possible and on the interface only make the interface aspects of it public and really think about what the person who's going to be using or what the service or class which is going to be using the class which you're creating really, really needs. What's the purpose of your class? Okay, and then write an interface which which is appropriate for that. So use the use the uh, private methods and private fields as much as you can. 
if you do this, then you're gonna you're gonna lead to loose coupling. Um, as as we discussed, we need to have things loosely coupled so that classes are not in, interdependent on each other. As we've seen with the Zool bad class, because we're using public fields in some of those classes, then the the interdependence between the classes becomes it becomes required and they and they're sort of written together so you may as well just write it, it all in one class so we need to have so that the um, the the information of the data stored in each object is kept for that object and that object only uh, a little note on code completion now that we're starting to write lots of new classes uh, with lots of methods we can start to use some of the features of BlueJ and one of them is the code completion um, also known as autocomplete on other um, things like Eclipse and NetBeans and Microsoft Visual Studio they have IntelliSense and auto, um, it's, it's IntelliSense is, is what it's called uh, so let's have a look at how that works in BlueJ so as I'm writing say I declare a string variable And then I want to do something with that. I can say s dot control space, and now that brings up all the methods which are available to it. So we've we've looked at a few of the methods previously, um, and so you're going to get your methods there. If we want to just use a method from our current application, then we control space, and then these are all the methods which are in our application. There's our play one there which we can then call from there. So that will give us good access to the methods which are in our particular application. Uh, looks something like that. So there's a code completion which we've just shown you for uh, in the uh, game class. Okay, so have a look at the documentation, have a look at some of the exercises on documentation in the chapter. Uh, but really start to think about how the interface is presented to users and to yourself ultimately when you go back to using your class. Um, yeah, so make sure you include all your class comments and method comments uh, from here on in. Okay, I'll see you next time.